This is the third video where we're working with the young German Shepherd Maverick. If you've seen the last two, we're going to be adding to those this week. We're going to be teaching him markers, the send away, walking backwards, and the through command. So it's a lot of different things that we're adding, but we want to keep the training very exciting with a lot of movement to keep the dog's enthusiasm up. I like movement and I like a lot of speed. If you don't want your dog to be as fast, do more duration exercises and that will often slow them down and our dogs match our speed as well. So if you're moving slowly, your dog's probably going to move slow as well, which is not always a bad thing. If you're training a house pet and you have little kids and you want a golden retriever that moves slow, great. We don't always want the same results. So you're going to adjust the training based on what you want from your dog. So the markers, remember marker is a word or sound that predicts any one of the four quadrants of opera conditioning. That's your positive and negative reinforcement, positive and negative punishment. Opera conditioning means a dog that understands that their behavior has an effect on their environment. Remember the positive and the negative happens after the behavior. The dog does the behavior, then we give them the treat, positive reinforcement. The dog does the behavior, then we turn off leash pressure, negative reinforcement. The dog jumps up on us, then we stop petting them, negative punishment. The dog starts to dig and you give the dog a correction with a leash pop, positive punishment. It happens after the behavior, that's what creates opera conditioning. But what we're going to be focused on is markers that predict a reward. There's three that I'm going to be teaching Maverick. A continuation marker, a terminal marker, and a secondary terminal marker. A continuation marker just predicts the reward. It doesn't change the dog's circumstances. I use the word yes. So when my dogs hear me say yes, they know I'm going to give them a treat. But if they're in a stay, they must maintain the stay. If they're not in a stay, they remain free from the stay. It just means they're going to get a reward. Then the terminal marker means release plus reward, but the reward is coming directly from me. The secondary terminal marker is also release plus reward, but go and get your reward. This matters if you have multiple rewards within a training environment that your dog can get access to, because our dogs are always going to choose which reward they prefer. So if you have a toy and then you have something more valuable off to the side, but you want your dog to take the toy and you have one terminal marker, there's a good chance your dog is going to go and grab the other item instead of the one that you have. So by distinguishing the difference between the two, we can control where the dog goes to get the reward. The terminal marker, I use the word free. So when I say free, that means release plus reward, but come to me to get the reward. For my secondary terminal marker, I use the word get it. So get it means go and get the reward. When I first start teaching a dog get it, I throw the food almost like we're rolling dice. So I take the food and I roll it for the dog to chase it. This is going to also increase that motivation because we're kicking in food drive, play drive, and prey drive. So we're utilizing a lot of drives within this training exercise. Now we know that our words mean what they predict. So in the beginning, the word means I'm going to throw a piece of food. But later on, we're going to transition to where the dog understands that it means to go and get the reward. And I'm going to introduce that once I start introducing a stay. And that's going to be a little bit down the road. So for this video, I'm going to be throwing it. Now the next one is the through. Through, I have the dogs run through my legs. Now, the way that I like to introduce it is when the dog's coming towards me, I take my right hand or my left, I drop it behind my back, the dog comes through my legs, and I let them take the food. I don't have them maintain the position, they just run right through my legs and get the treat. And what I like to do from there is I like to pivot back around and do it on the opposite side. So now the dogs come flying by this way and they grab another treat, and you can do a couple of those. Most dogs really like this because again, it's a lot of movement, movement increases motivation. We're also going to get the dog to walk backwards. When I teach a dog to walk backwards, open hand means to come to me, closed hand means to go away or back up a little bit, <clears throat> depending on the situation. So for this, when the puppy's in front of me, I'm gonna start by taking my hands, curling them just like this. When we curl our fingers in, and I have the tape by the way because the puppy sharp teeth, uh, that's uh, athletic tape, so if you have a puppy that's tearing up your hands, this does help. So when I curl my fingers up, the dog's muzzle is going over trying to get to where the reward is. That naturally will bring their back end up, and then we can get them to walk backwards. In the beginning, you just wanna use one, maybe two steps. You don't wanna add Ask for too many steps initially we want to reward the small steps in the beginning 
And then we can transition to another exercise, which we're going to be doing is the send away. So the send away is where we can tell our dogs run and they take off. This isn't a lot of competition obedience, but it's also fun to do even if you're not competing. So you can see we have a bowl over there and I'm using the bowl for the send away. This is the only time my puppy eats out of a bowl. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toss food in there and in the beginning, there's really not much to it. It's pretty simple. Once I toss the food, I'm gonna hold him and encourage him to wanna get it. So we're gonna be building that frustration. As I walk back, I'm going to set the puppy down. He's gonna take off to the bowl and get the reward. And then he's gonna come right back to me for another exercise, which there's a good chance I'll do the get it at this moment. So he gets the treat there, he comes back, get it, boom, and then I throw another piece that direction. So we're going to get a lot of movement and it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's get the puppy out and get started. Now we have the puppy out, a little maverick here. Are you ready to train? Are you ready? So with the continuation marker, I'm going to introduce that when I'm getting him to walk backwards. So let me show you that. First, I'm going to load my hand up with some treats. Remember, I'm not worried about the jumping right now. And I'm going to tuck it under, get him to walk back. Yes, open my hand, give him a treat. Yes, open my hand, give him a treat. So yes is my continuation marker. Yes. This is where I'm introducing the continuation marker. Then the terminal marker, as he's coming towards me, I like to say, free, and then I move back and give him the treat. So he's running towards me, free, and then I give him the treat, free. Good, good boy. And again, we're trying our best not to pair, meaning I'm trying not to do this, free. That may happen on occasions. If it does, again, don't worry about it, but try not to pair. And then with the get it, we're gonna say, get it, and then throw the treat. I usually do this when the puppy's running at me. So I'll say, get it, and then I'll toss the treat. Very good, get it, and then I'll toss the treat. So we're getting a lot of movement. Now I'm gonna show you the through. Remember, these are all very simple, but they do take a little bit of practice to get good at. For the through, you wanna be pretty quick with it. So if I have him here and he's running at me, so I'm gonna do a get it, toss the treat. Now when he comes back towards me, open my legs, boom, there he gets the treat. I cut back quickly, very good. Now I dropped that one, but that's okay, excellent. And he's chasing that, so he's having a little bit of fun. Good. So I can get a few of those in, in the very beginning. So that last one, he caught the tape. And now we're gonna have the bowl. So I'm gonna take the food, I'm gonna set it in the bowl and I'm gonna keep him back. A little bit of restraint, good, good job. And then I'm gonna let him go. Very nice. And as he comes back towards me, get it. We're gonna to toss the food and let's load up another couple pieces. And again, we're gonna restrain him. Oh, so he knows I wanna grab him. Good boy. I'm gonna bring him back, run. And then I'm gonna send him. Oh yeah, I said run, which I'm starting to add the command for that, but you don't need to add the command in the beginning. So remember we have the markers. The, we're gonna have him walk backwards. Yes, give him the treat, the free, and move back. So there I basically rewarded him for jumping up. The get it, and then we're gonna toss. Having him go through the legs, boom. Boom, very nice. You gotta be quick to reload. And then we're also going to do the send away. So he knows I'm gonna grab him. He already knows this. He's trying to get to it. Oh, he got it. Oh, no, he didn't get it. So as your dog gets better, you can increase the distance and then send them to go get it. Very good. So now while you're working with your dog, you can incorporate everything from the past two lessons as well as this one. And remember the sessions need to be short. Five minutes with a puppy is all you need. But this gives you a lot of movement and a lot of fun. So remember we can also incorporate the spin. I like to push their butt to get them to spin a little quicker. Very nice. That helps with those Sorry, that helps with some of those other exercises where we're taking the dog from the center position into the left and right heel position. It also helps with these movements. The dog learns to move their body in a way that you want them to move to get that very pretty sort of in sync movement with you as the trainer. It should feel like a dance. And when it feels like a dance, it looks way better too. Now in the beginning, some of these might feel a little awkward. It might feel a little weird, that's fine. It's gonna feel awkward and weird until it doesn't. And then it's gonna look good. It's the same with praise. So often people have a hard time doing the high pitch praise. But when I'm working with a dog, my praise is high pitch. It's very enthusiastic. And it's as if I'm super excited that the dog is performing the way that they're performing. And look at, he's sitting here looking at me right now, duration in position, and I'm not even working on a stay. A dog will do a stay. 
We want movement. So again, we're going to bring him into position. Very good. Nice job. Give him the treat. Walk away and have him come back. But I'm out of treat, so I'm going to go all done. And now he knows that I'm done and he can go get some water or do whatever he wants to do. So keep the sessions short and fun. Remember, try not to pair when you're doing the markers, meaning don't do it at the same time. It may happen on occasions. Don't stress yourself out. Just try your best not to pair. Work that send out, work the dog running through the legs, and also work on getting your dog to walk backwards. We're gonna add to these as we progress through the training. So do as many sessions as you can each day. Keep them nice, short, and fun, and you're gonna start to see that puppy that you want to be when they become that older dog.